Welcome to an adventure in time and space history, my YouTube channel. Welcome today. Um, let's just say I'm going to uh, be playing some Dr. He music while I, you know, uh, have uh, something else planned because uh, someone said that they like me playing the, you know, theme song from Dr. Who in the background. So, so there it goes. <laughs> It's like, I, they said they liked the, the little theme music in the background, so it's like pretty cool. Um, to say, I'm going to still do my review of The 11th Doctor. I already did Series 5. I'm going to be doing Series 6 soon, uh, like a basically for review. Uh, because I'm, I decided to do like Season 1. A season, not season one, season five, season six, and season seven because the eleventh Doctor was on for three seasons. I'm breaking them up, basically, uh, with with the you know with you know instead compartmentalizing and putting it all in one. I decided to break it up like this. You know, I get a lot. You know, I got a lot of you know other people that are on. My friends, let's who Doctor Who fans who watch my videos, uh, kind of suggested what I should do. So I thought I would, you know, um, you know, change it. It's like I'm still new to the, the doing uh, something like this from Doctor Who. Um, so and I'm new to this. So it's like every time someone gives me a little bit of a suggestion about how to you know improve, which helps because in the next time I do it then I will improve and make changes. Well this time I'm going to be doing some code quotes from doctors 9 through 12 from New Who and some of them are really good codes that I like and I'm I you know I think are really good well done. Uh, the first quote I am going to do by the Ninth Doctor, and we all know this one is his quote from Parting Ways to Rose, which I really, you know, I, I, to me it shows a little bit of emotion, and uh, it's, it's just, it's a way, it's because the Ninth Doctor, when I did my review on he just came out of the time war. And he's very, I would say, kind of rigid, you know, basically not cold hearted, just, you know, want to get the things done and stuff like that. The, his his um, people died and all this and that, and the, he's the only one left. So, and, and Rose kind of helped him more develop his character. But it was only at the end of the last episode, Parting Ways, uh, that he said this. And it, it, I thought it was really great because it's like, the if you watch it, Rose's reaction to all this, just, you know, just her reaction. She says a few things, but just her facial expression and, and all that, it just it shows the whole thing. It's called, and this is, and then not thought this is called, but this is what it said. Time Lords have a little trick. It's sort of way of cheating death, except it means I'm going to change. And you're not going to see me, you're not going to see me again. Not with this, this thing, this thing, this, that boat face. And before I go, before I go, I just want to tell you. You were fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And you know what? So was I. And I I think it's like really neat because all through the whole thing is the thing that he always says is fantastic. That that was his little phrase. And as we see the ten doctor, his famous phrase is alone Z. So I just wanted to throw that out because they but the 12th Doctor does not really have his little cliche word that he uses and stuff like that. So uh, the 9th, 10th, and 11th Doctors have that, whereas Peter Capelli plays the 12th Doctor. I haven't got to his, uh, do the review on 
his seasons and episodes. But he decided he did not want to do that. So, you know, it's, it's the way I look at it is if the doctor wants to use this, a certain word, that's, that's great. You know, that's their take on their doctor. You know, what they want people to remember them for. Now, the next one is, is, um, is the 10th doctor. And this is when he was talking to Wolf Vermont, and it's called the From the End of Time. He says, I was told he will knock four times. That was the prophecy. Knock four times, and then I can still die. If I'm killed before regeneration, then I'm dead. Even then, even if I change, it feels like dying. Everything. I am dies. Some new man goes sultring away, and I am dead. And when you think about it, it's it's kind of interesting the way he puts this. It's like he's looking. It's like yeah, whenever you have a regeneration, it's like you feel like you are dying. You know, you're not really dying per se, like you know, like humans would because. Um, the doctor's a time lord, which is an alien. Uh, to him, is different, but as more as the human aspect, we die, we're gone. He dies, but his death is he's regeneration, regenerating into new body, basically. Um, now, you know. Now we're going to go into the 11th Doctor, and this one is from Vincent and, his do Vincent and the Doctor. And I thought it was really interesting. I'm not, like I said, as I have these all, I have these all printed out because it's like you think I can remember you know, a lot of the speeches here. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm reading this. It says, the way I see it. Life is a pile of good things and bad things. The good things don't always soften the bad things. But vice versa, the bad things don't always so spoil the good things and make them unimportant. Uh, the truth of the matter of fact is, the way when I look at that, and you know, it's like when you watch it, they went back and in in Vincent. They found out Vincent killed himself and killed himself, and, and it devastated Amy because they did everything they can, took him back uh, to the museum and and had this guy in it. Says he said, you know, as they went back and took Vincent back to his time and era, he says, you're the first doctor who made a difference. You're the first doctor that had you know, that has made a difference. I'm going to take my, and it's like, it may sound like, you know, he's still going to be around, you know, and then when they go back, Amy finds out he killed him, that Vincent took his life, and that devastated Amy, and that's what the doctor told Amy, is about the good things don't outweigh the bad things, and vice versa, you know, they don't, Bad things don't always spoil the good things, basically. So, I mean, it's it's basically interesting. Uh, the next one, um, basically, I'm not going to tell you what episode this is from, but you're going to know because it's in this. And I like it. It's like real cool. It's a really good speech. He said, hello, Stormhenge. Stonehenge, Stonehenge, not Stonehenge, Stonehenge. Who's going to take the Pandora that takes the universe? But bad news, everyone. Because, because guess who? Ha, listen. You, you lot, you all whizzing about. It's really very distracting. Could you all just stand still? Oh, could you also stay still a minute? Because I am talking. Now, the question of the hour is, who's got the Pandorica? 
Answer, I do. Next question, who's coming to take it? Take it from me. Come on, look at me. No plan, no backup, no weapon worth a damn. Oh, and something else. I don't have anything to lose. So if you, so, so you're sitting up there with your silly little, in your silly little spaceships with all your silly little guns and you got any plans of taking them Pandora tonight, just remember who's standing in your way. Just remember every black day I stopped you and then, and then do the smart thing and let somebody else try first. And basically I didn't have to say because it has the word Pandora. It's 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 the episode is called the Pandora Opens. And it, it's like it's interesting. I've heard this speech done with some of the classic doctors that are so alive, and it's kind of interesting how the twist that they would say it's not as the same as Matt Smith, but it's just you have to look it up on YouTube. They they have that where the different doc different classical doctors uh, do this this speech here. It, it gives a different take on it. Um, the one the next one is like really short, but it's very horrific and to anybody who feels down you can always use use this it's it's more about uplifting basically it says do you know in 900 year years of time and space i never met anyone who wasn't important before and it's by the 11th doctor and it is one of the quotes I really like because it's like saying, hey, in all my time, you know, I mean, in human years, of all my time, I've, you know, that I've never met anybody who's not important. So you're important, not important, everybody is important. You know, we all are in, in some capacity and that's the reason why I put that there because it's it's one of the quotes I really like because someone would use me when I would do kind of you know down and out basically I feel like I'm not important uh, the other one I, I really like and this is a speech and I love this and you, you're going to know why and I'll tell you what episode it is but I'm going to read it and you probably, if you knew, if you watched this, ep, if you watched the episode with this, and you know what I'm talking about. It says, oh, you, you think you're a god, but you're not a god. You're just a parasite eating out with jealousy. Um, you're a parasite eating out with jealousy and envy and longing for the lives of others. You feed on them, on the memory of love and loss, and birth and death, and joy and sorrow. So, so come on, then take mine, take my memories. But, but I hope you got a big appetite because I lived a long life. I've seen a few things. I walked away. I walked away from the last great time war. I, I marked the passing of the time lords. I saw the birth of universes. I watched as time ran out, moment by moment, until nothing remained. Not time, not space, just me. I walked in universes where the laws of physics were devised by the mind of a madman. I watched universes freeze and creations burn. I have seen things you wouldn't, wouldn't believe. I have lost things you will never understand, and I know things. Secrets must never be told. Knowledge 
knowledge that must never be spoken, knowledge that would make pure sight God's blaze. So come on then, take it, take it all, baby, have it. You have it all. It's from uh, the rings of a had ten or however you say that. Um, you could see he, as he's speaking, he, he the tears coming down his eyes, and you can see the motion in the the speech. That's the reason why I like is because the speech is very much <coughs> with emotion and stuff like that. And um, I like it because it's, it's one of Matt Smith's. I mean, he's done a lot of good speeches. And this is one good, long speech besides the Pandora, but that he did. And um, I, I, I think it's well written. And you can see the emotion in him as he's saying all this. And uh, let's put it this way. You probably need teleprompters to, to read because... To remember that it's it's just it's it will be hard basically. Uh, the next one is uh, from the time of the doctor, and it's the eleventh doctor basically. Um, it says we all okay, we all change. When you think about it, we all different people all through our lives, and that's okay. That's good. You gotta keep them moving. So as so as long as you remember all the people that you used to be, I will I will not forget one line of this. Not one day, I swear. I will I will always remember when the doctor was me. Now that's um, his last speech. Um, it's called the time of the doctor. And um, it's basically it's it's when he regenerated into the twelfth doctor, and 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 uh, basically Claire did not want him to change, and you could see her motion and all that, you know. Um, and now we're gonna get in with the twelfth doctor. The twelfth doctor is it's from. Flatline, which I really think it's it's like really good. It, it it's basically a one one of a really good speech. It says, "I tried to talk. I want you to remember that I've tried to reach reach out. I tried to understand you, but I think you under, understand us perfectly, and I think that you just don't care." And I don't know whether you are here to invade or infiltrate or just replace us. I don't suppose it really matters now. You are the monsters. That is the role you seem determined to play. So it seems that I must play mine. I'm the man who stops the monsters. <clears throat> and that's basically the truth. It's, I like how Pierre Campaldi at the he says you you know uh, where he mentions them as monsters and he's like I must play you know mine. I'm the man who stops the monsters, uh, which I think is really good. To basically, <clears throat> when you think of that's what the doctor basically. Um, is he kind of like uh, helps and stops monsters and aliens and whatever is attacking the people of Earth, basically. Um, another one that I'm going to read, this is from Death in Heaven, it's the 12th Doctor. He says, I'm not a good man, and I'm not a bad man. I'm not a hero, and I'm definitely not a, not a president. And no, I am not an officer. Do you know what I am? I'm an idiot with a box. 
in a screwdriver, just passing through, helping out, learning. I don't need an army. I never have. <coughs> because I've got them. Always them. Because love is not an emotion. Love is a promise. Um, love, love is a promise. Everybody says love is emotion. Um, emotion is a feeling. You know, it, it's different from love. Love is a promise. It's like I say, I love you. You know, it's like I promise you. I promise you that I, that's my promise to you is I love you. <coughs> and I like how he, how he, um, how he said that, he says, with that box and the screwdriver just passing by. And what more can you say? I mean, if you look at Matt, if you look at Matt Smith's doctor, he says, I'm definitely a madman with a box, you know? And, and in a sense, <laughs> that's basically the truth. Um, and um, here's another one. This That was definitely heaven, but this is the Zygon one. And I like it because it really stands out. He says, I, and this really does explain a lot. Um, he says, I don't understand. Are you kidding me? Of course I understand. I mean, you call this war? This is, this, this funny little thing? This is not war. I fought in bigger war than you would ever know. I did worse things that you could ever imagine. And when I close my eyes, I hear more screams than anyone could ever be able to count. And you know what you did with all that pain? Shall I tell you where you put it? You hold it, hold it tight till it burns your hand. And you say this, no one else would ever have to live like this. No one else would have to feel this pain. Not on my watch. And basically, um, <clears throat> the Zygons went and started a war in with this, with the, with the, um, with a box basically. Um, you have, um, you have uh, the brigadier's daughter basically is got the button for their box and the Zygon, which is a clone copy of Clara, on the other one. And what they want to do is they want to wipe out the humans so the Zygons you know, basically live. And basically, what the love of what basically the 12 doctors saying is, I fought in a bigger war. You know, and uh, and basically he he's gonna stop this, and he's like he's saying this is not gonna happen on my watch. This is not gonna happen while I'm here. Um, the next great speech of Peter Capaldi as a twelfth Doctor is from the Doctor Falls. Hey, I'm going to be dead in a few hours. So before I go, let's have this out. You and me, once and for all, winning. Is that what you think it's about? I'm not trying to win. I'm not doing this because I want to be someone or because I, I hate someone. Or because I want to blame someone. It's not because it's not because it's fun. God knows it's not because it's easy. It's not even because it works. Because I hardly ever because it hardly ever does. I do what I do because it's right, because it's decent. Above all, above all, it's kind. It's just that. 
just kind. If I run away today, good people will die. If I stand and fight, some of them might live. Maybe not many. Maybe not for long. Hey, maybe there's no point in any of this at all. But it's the best I can do. So I'm going to do it. And I will stand here doing it until it kills me. You're going to die too. Someday when, someday when, when, when will that be? Have you thought about it? What, what, what would you die for? Who, who, who I am is where I stand. Where I, where I stand is where I fall. Stand with me. These people are terrified. Maybe we can help a little. Why not? Just at, at the end, just be kind. Um, that's called the Dr. Falls. It's kind of interesting in a way, basically. Um, kind of explains uh, the doctor, you know. I, basically what the talk doctors say is like um, that he's going to do what he needs to do. Even if it basically kills him, basically. it's He's going to stand and fight no matter what. And, you know, do what he does best. Um, the last one is called, it's from the episode Twice Upon a Time, which I didn't really care about that episode, but I will, I will, um, not gonna give it away, um, basically, <laughs> about it, because it's gonna be part of my review. Um, well, like I said, I watched it, and, mm, kind of was not my cup of tea, basically, but, I, like I said, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, you know, like, uh, River Song spoilers, you know, basically, I uh, like spoiler alert. Um, here's the speech, and this is his last speech before he regenerated <clears throat> into that <clears throat> when Star City 13 doctor. He says, Oh, there it is. Silly old universe. The more I save it, the more it needs saving. Um, it's a treadmill. Yes, yes, I know. They'll get it all wrong without me. Well, I suppose one more lifetime won't kill anyone. Well, except me. You wait a moment, doctor. Let's, let's get it right. I got a few things to say to you. Bas basic stuff first. Never be cruel, never be cowardly, and never, never eat pears. Remember, hate is always foolish, and love is always wise. Always try to be nice, but never fail to be kind. Oh, and you mustn't tell anyone your name. No one would understand it anyway, except, except children. Children can hear it. <coughs> Sometimes, if their hearts are in the right place, and the stars are too, children can hear your name. But nobody else, nobody else ever. Laugh hard, run fast, be kind. Doctor, I let you go. Now, um, basically, a lot of us... Uh, feel whenever Peter Kabbalah did that uh, that speech is um, <coughs> he was like saying goodbye to you know laying his laying the doctor letting him go basically saying goodbye um, because the monstrosity takes after him but some 
I'm not going to get into that because I don't want <laughs> to cause any strife here. Um, but, you know, uh, remember, hate is always foolish and love, and love is always wise. Uh, that's true. Hate is really foolish and love is always wise. And as my dad would say, hate is a very strong word and you never should say i you know hate somebody or stuff like that you know because you just you should just hate their actions hate you know what they've done but i do like that speech in a way basically and i like this wife i never never eat pears you know you know some of the stuff he says in there is kind of a little funny but I think it's a really good farewell speech before he regenerates. Um, if you have any uh, favorite spe uh, speeches um, from the new hymn or classic who or whatever um, that you'd like to share or would like me to share and stuff like that, um, leave them in the comments below. And, um, like I said, I am, I'm going to do a review of The Love and Doctor, his, uh, Series 6, which is the second season. Um, that would be coming up. I've just been busy with real life a little bit. I've been busy in real life, you know, like I said, dealing with family issues, uh, you know, you know, with my parents and stuff, what's going on with them. Um, I've also uh, been got a seasonal job, and so that's been taking up my time in evenings. Um, <clears throat> um, basically, I haven't worked for a long time, and I got back into it, so my body's kind of, you know, trying to get used to that. Um so that takes up my time during the evenings and during the day. I just try to <clears throat> chill out before I have to catch the bus and leave for work. So this is like pretty much takes up a lot of time and then house chores and stuff like that. Um, anyway, if there's anything that I have not covered, anything that you would like me to talk about, um, if it's not, even if it's not Doctor Who related that you would like me to cover, um, put it down in the comments, suggest, you know, the comments down there as, like, a suggestion. Like I said, Doctor Who or other things you would like me to talk about, like movies and certain, like, uh, shows or something like that, leave in the, com leave in the comments below there. Um, if if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And also click the little bell to notify so you can know, um, so you can get notified in the next video that I put out. Um, also, uh, if you like the content or why share, you just click the like button. If you don't, there's an unlike button. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, I'm not here to be popular, <laughs> far from it, but I'm here to share things of Doctor Who um, that I love, you know. Right now, we're in a t uh, time of turmoil and toxic to uh, fans against other fans, you know, those who are for the 13th Doctor and those who are more say to the traditional role of a male doctor and that that we're not too keen on this on a female doctor um uh, you know it's just and and we got that toxicity where those those who start watching doctor who with the 13th female doctor <clears throat> attacking those who don't really care who have a different opinion and so right now the show's like in like a terminal type of stage and stage and the fandom is kind of like uh you know 
you know, separated and there's like a uh, bitterness, uh, not bitterness, but like a fighting between the fandom. And it kind of, you know, us who are loyal fans who love the show and have such passion, it, it kind of gets depressing. So, you know, this sharing of the show and like episodes and after I get done with the new who, you know, the new doctors of new who, then I'm going to go and do the classic episodes of classic doctor who Let me here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have something on my screen there. Um, but like I said, is after I do the new who, then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to do some review of the classic Q and I may shake it up a bit by also doing um, some more quotes from classic Q. Um, I may end up doing a discussion on the companions and basically their roles and what they brought to the doctor. You know, the classic doctors had uh, more companions, like maybe three companions, maybe one, you know, two companions or three companions, and they are one, you know, they kind of shake up, uh, there was more classic doctors than knew him, but I am going to not, I'm going to cover the companions from every era, um, whenever I get the companions of knew who, then I'm not only the cab companions, I'm going to also cover those who didn't keep traveling with the doctor, but those who traveled with him for short, who were with him for like a short period of time, uh, basically. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to turn up something different um, on when it comes to Doctor Who. I also may do some other content of non-Doctor Who stuff, you know, just kind of keep it up, you know, a little bit of a difference. Um, so it's, the, it's like I said, it's an ever changing project and I keep trying to improve, um, improve, you know, over time to, to basically make it better. It, it's not a hundred percent better, but I am just going to keep on proving to, you know, I know where I'm at. I do want to give a shout out um, to Noah's channel. It's called uh, The Tardis Zone. And I'm also going to give another shout out to Not My Doctor Who. And um, uh, check them out. Um, and subscribe to them too, as well. You know, we're out there putting content of Doctor Who uh, Doctor Who stuff out there. Uh, no covers a lot of things that's going on with Doctor Who and, and certain things that are happening with the show. Uh, different type of content. And um, he kind of really gets it out there. I don't know how to do like a slideshow type of thing, but he does. I'm hoping maybe I'll end up learning how to do that myself. Um, like I said, I'm just a small independent type of little YouTuber. And if you like the videos that you've seen me done, share them. Let others who are like-minded, who love the show, share my videos and get the word out there so I can get more more view, viewers and build up more so um, I can be able to you know get more um, people out there to I mean I don't know it's like I want to be able to reach more people. I want to be able to reach more and be able to let people enjoy the love of this show that I have, the Doctor Who, this Doctor Who. Yes, I'm American. I'm not 
English or British, but he came over here to America with the classic doctors. I, I think it's, I think the fourth doctor, I'm not sure. Um, but came here to America when we started watching it. And it's just, it just exploded, you know. So you got fans almost everywhere. So I'm just wanting to spread the word, um, share my love for the show. Like I said, if there's anything that you want covered on Doctor Who, leave a comment. Or anything else that you would like would like me to do leave in the comments below as a suggestion and like I said su subscribe so you know you're subscribed and hit the notification bell that you can be notified uh, when I'm gonna be doing up you know putting out another video so first of all I would like you to do that but second of all uh, check out the Tartar Zone, and not my Doctor Who, don't forget to subscribe to them and ring their notification bell, and share their videos, and, sh you know, share that, get the word out about them, too, and, um, you have a good day, and, um, and see ya, bye.